Hey everybody, welcome back to the Castos YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Castos. Thanks for joining our live stream today. We're talking to Mark Zarhar. Mark, welcome to the program. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for having me. You and I have known each other for a while in the WordPress space. You have a handful of awesome WordPress plugins. You do a lot in the WordPress space, uh, specifically around content for WordPress. And we were chatting before uh, we went live here. We we're talking about some of the things that you're doing. You have a website called WP Mayor that you run, generally talking about WordPress, reviews, plugins, themes, industry news. But at the heart of it, you and your team are content creators. We love content creators here, obviously. Uh, and I'm fascinated to talk about content uh, creation, whether it's a blog, a YouTube video, or uh, a podcast, obviously. And you mentioned that you were starting a podcast. But give us that elevator pitch who are you? What do you do? What do you do with WP Mayor? And how do your tools serve other content creators on the web? Sure. So I'm the CEO of a company called Rubbercode. And under that, we have, like you mentioned, WP Mayor, uh, which has been around for over 10 years now. We celebrated 10 years last year. And that's basically a WordPress resource site where we write tutorials about uh, WordPress products and services, where we review products. Uh, we have giveaways every now and again, basically just focusing around the WordPress space. And then we have, like I mentioned, our own products. So we have an RSS aggregator plugin, uh, which imports RSS feeds for news, podcasts, YouTube videos, anything with a valid RSS feed. And we have a new product which we launched last year called Spotlight Instagram Feeds. And that is an Instagram feed plugin for WordPress, which basically allows you to embed either your own Instagram feed uh, or your client's Instagram feed or hashtag feeds. You can create shoppable feeds, sort of link in bio style pages. Um, yeah, that sums it up. And what has changed? I mean, you mentioned you hinted at starting a podcast. Um, my mm -hmm. gut reaction is, well, I assume I didn't ask you, but I assume that's for WP, WP Mayor or for the for the products or both? WP, WP Mayor mostly. Yeah. My gut instinct is what the heck took you so long? <laughs> you know, <clears throat> why haven't you started a podcast? As many people, if you don't know, there's a lot of WordPress podcasts that are out there in a space where, you know, the audience is very passionate, but the audience is certainly not that big, right? They're not, well, I shouldn't say that. It depends on what content you're going after, but the people who really care about the movement of, of WordPress proper is a very small audience, but probably like you've seen a very large audience for those who want to learn tutorials and reviews and stuff like that. Um, why a podcast now? What's really motivated you to do that? So we actually used to do it in the past under the Mastermind FM brand. That was a podcast started by our founder, Jean Galea, and by James Laws from Ninja Forms. And I had taken it over after a while, and I ran podcasts for, I think, something close to a year. But then that started the transition more into the finance space uh, and now Sean runs that from, from his end. And we want to do something from, from WP Mayor's end to continue the WordPress side of things. So the WordPress episodes basically sort of took a back seat. We all got busy with a number of different projects. So we said, it's high time we, we get back into this thing. Uh, we start speaking to WordPress product owners again, service providers, WordPress users, and see what comes out of that. So this one's going to be a little bit more, uh, well, are you going to focus like that same content where, because I know on Mastermind, it was much, well, the business mastermind, right? Business so really focus, diving yeah. into like, you know, the ins and outs of business, maybe the WordPress business space in general, but are you going to broaden this one up to be more, I don't know, I'll, I'll say WordPress user friendly, not that yours was difficult before, but like in this space, what I'm envisioning is, yeah, this is going to be like, hey, you want to learn WordPress from a, a very beginner level, this is a this is the place to be. Yeah, so it's going to be a bit, bit of a different approach. We haven't really settled on, on the exact way we're going to be doing things. We're leaving things open. But yeah, Mastermind is very business focused. It's how to run a WordPress business in terms of setting plugins or themes or hosting or anything like that. This will probably be more focused towards how the products are used, what kind of products you need for different use cases, um, what kind of services there are out there, why choose one host over another, that kind of stuff. Cool. Um, well, hopefully you use Castos to do that, or at least your WordPress website <laughs> to to, uh, to to manage that. And uh, yeah. it's going to be exciting. And did you catch any of the? Have you been catching any of the the audio news lately? Facebook, Apple, the stuff that Apple launched yesterday. Did you dig into any of that? 
I just saw some tweets about the Apple stuff. Uh, I just saw, I think, Marcus Brownlee's tweets, just the different colors of the IMAX. So, yeah, I, I don't have an opinion on it just yet. <laughs> it's a bit too early. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so Apple really getting into uh, what, what we've been doing at Castos for quite a while now is uh, private podcasting or members-only uh, podcasting, a, a, a method where somebody comes to a website, pays you a little bit of money, and then they get access to this premium private uh, RSS feed uh, for their podcast. And now Apple's getting into the game. Uh, and as you'd imagine, <clears throat> Apple is, uh, you know, you have to manage the private podcast through your Podcast Connect account. In other words, you can't take your private RSS feed at Castos and simply connect it up to Apple like you can with your public free podcast. And of course, there will be an Apple tax, $20 a year to be a, a private creator, plus 30% uh, of your subscription revenue goes to Apple for the first year. And then second year, they dial that back to 15%. Uh, so very interesting move, uh, but one that I think largely the industry expected from Apple, at least in terms of the revenue sharing stuff. Yeah, definitely the way, the Apple way of doing things. Yeah. You're not going to do anything at Apple without a little bit of money given yep. up. <laughs> Apple taxes, it's known. I'm going to pull up the um, uh, the websites from your from the plugin that we're looking at specifically today. But uh, before we do get to that one, I want to just quickly chat about Spotlight because mm -hmm. uh, I've used this uh, plugin before uh, for you in the past. It's a fantastic plugin. It's very well designed. Thank and you. man, Instagram's hot, right? Like you haven't seen Instagram dropping in in usage, I'd imagine. Um, how did this plugin come about and, and what are your future plans for this as, uh, as content creators get more, even more into the Instagram space? Yeah, so this actually grew out of the RSS plugin. So we had a lot of users who are using the RSS plugin and importing social media feeds. And many years ago, almost all social media platforms had RSS feeds available. So that was, you were able to do that. But over time, they stopped supporting them. There were third-party services which weren't reliable. And we were looking for the next sort of thing to do, the next product to create. And we said, why not get into social media? Biggest option being Instagram. And that's where Spotlight grew out of. So basically within, I think, around five months, um, we researched this thing. We looked at the competition out there. We looked at what was available. And yeah, you mentioned the usability and the UI. That was one of the main things we focused on. We learned from our RSS, the RSS plugin. We learned from our competitors in the social media space. And we built something that's a lot more usable, a lot more user-friendly. So you just go in, you connect your Instagram account, you, you're instantly shown a preview of it, you design it, and then you have the options to embed it, be it through a short code, a block, a widget, and then a mentor widget as well, have a direct integration with that. And just making it as simple as possible to, to yeah. move on to there. And like I said, the audience is, is growing. It's not, it's not actually getting any smaller at all. Uh, the platform's evolving. So we're planning to evolve with it. Like recently, Instagram added uh, IGTV support to their API. So now you can, with Spotlight, embed your IGTV videos on your website. And you can style them in different ways. You can put the whole video there. You can have it linked to Instagram. Or it opens a pop-up on, uh, on your website, the same way like it does on Instagram's website. Play the video directly there. You can show captions comments and then it goes further into like i mentioned earlier this shoppable feeds that you can do there's link in bio style pages which you can create with it and it could link to blog posts link to podcast episodes link to testimonials link to product pages whatever you want so like we always talk about and i say we the collective we as creators um something that would probably be you know like a lot of people say is like we really want to sort of own the platform. And unfortunately, you know, we can't own Instagram. It, it, I mean, uh -huh. we might be able to have copies of these images, right? Locally before we upload to Instagram, but largely once they're on Instagram, we're just playing in Instagram's uh, uh, playground or sandbox yeah. plugin like this. You can pull this onto your website and at least you have that ability to say, Hey, look, if I'm going to drive lots of traffic to my own property, whether you're doing a, a blog, an Instagram, you're a photographer, or even if you're a podcaster, um, pulling it to your website obviously tries to uh, heighten the, the chance to have a different experience for the visitor, 
right? And, and I'd imagine this is what you see most people using Spotlight for, but even WPRSS aggregator, content elsewhere, but let's get them back to our, our website and hopefully either get them to consume more content or maybe hop on an email list. Is that a fair a fair assessment of how folks should be using these tools or at least maybe thinking of one part of thinking of these tools? Yeah, that's probably the main part of how people use it nowadays. Um, Spotlight, for example, specifically. Instagram, uh, you, you, you need to have an Instagram account to go see other Instagram accounts, go see certain posts and so on. With Spotlight, you won't need that. In the sense that if you have a brand, if you have a podcast, if you have a blog, whatever it is, and you're posting on Instagram, you can take that content, put it on your website, and anyone who's not on Instagram can see it on your website in the same way any image gallery would be on your site. And there's no need to create double the content for your website, for Instagram, for different platforms, and put them into, uh, you can just bring them into one place. Same thing with, with RSS. So rather than uh, creating content and, and duplicating things across different platforms, take a podcast, for example, you can have your podcast go automatically to whatever platforms you support. And then the RSS aggregator plugin will automatically import that into your website and you can have a podcast feed directly on, on your site, on your personal blog, whatever it may be. Uh, i throw a curveball question at you. What's it like to work, or maybe you, and knock on wood, uh, hopefully this has not happened, but what's it like to work with Instagram? Like when they change things, right? Uh, you know, these are things yeah. that are largely out of your control. Are they communicating upcoming API changes to you? How they store images? Have you come to that crossroads at all with that plugin at all? So they do communicate. Um, it's not, it, you can't really get in touch with their team if anything goes wrong. There's a developer side where they do answer a lot more. Um, in comparison to any other form of support. So yeah, they communicate the API changes. So we, we monitor those on a consistent basis. Some issues do happen. I think we only had one occasion so far in the past year where they made a minor change to the API, which wasn't announced. And that was added, I think, to a change look at a data point. And it broke certain parts of basically all Instagram plugins, Instagram feed plugins. So basically it was a rush, it was on a Saturday, um, Sunday we woke up to, to, to the problem and by, by Monday afternoon we had it fixed. But yeah, that's, that's one of the benefits of using a plugin like Spotlight where you don't have to monitor these things yourself uh, as a user. You can just rely on the developers to support you and to handle that backend stuff themselves. Yeah. It's funny, just like randomly in a sort of third degree away from, from the stuff that we're talking about today. I had a friend <clears throat> who's a videographer and a cinematographer and He's been building his website out and he's very like, as all, I guess, like filmmakers or photographers, I guess even WordPress developers and, and, and many of us who are in the creative space, he's very opinionated. And I was trying to get him to use WordPress and he was like, no, I don't want to use WordPress. Uh, and he, I, I think he ended up on Squarespace or Wix. I, I, I can't remember which platform he chose, but he was looking to integrate um, or embed his Google reviews that he mm -hmm. gets uh, from his Google's sites or whatever places, whatever they call it. Um, so he's like, he's like, do you know how to do this? Like every, everywhere I look I, uh, uh, on, on the platform that I, that I picked, uh, I have to pay a monthly fee <laughs> for the add on or something like that. I'm like, eh, well, you should, first of all, you should have went with WordPress <laughs> and <Yep>. second, <laughs> uh, no, I don't have a solution for you. Right. Because you're on that, that sort of closed source platform, but, it's interesting how people think about, you know, once they get into it, they're like, oh, like these are areas that I don't own anymore. And while step one might be to embed it, it is interesting to think about like this whole ownership of content. Um, WPRSSaggregator.com, that's largely the topic uh, of today. We're going to show, or at least I'm going to, hopefully, uh, not fumble my way through a demonstration of, of using WP RSS aggregator. I'm going to pull it up on the website up on screen right now. Uh, the use case here, uh, I'll pitch it and then you can refine it. You know, we all talk, well, I talk largely about the RSS feed on this channel, about podcasting, how important that is. Basically, this business card that you hand out to other places on the web that says, hey, here's all my podcast information. Here's all my episodes. And once you have this card, you'll get these new updates uh, every time I, I pump them out. RSS feeds are not just for podcasts. Uh, they're for blog posts and 
many other sources of information. It's a, I think it's like what a 22 year old technology at this point, um, something like that. And your plugin allows you to, if you have a WordPress website, grab RSS feeds from around the web and display them directly onto your website. So if you are building out um, something like a community site, uh, a site that that gathers and displays content from your local community, from other people who are blogging, other news sources, other podcasters, uh, you can quickly and easily grab somebody's feed and display it on this centralized website. It doesn't mean you own the content. It doesn't necessarily mean that it actually stores the content, although I think that's an option, right? We can actually store content yeah, from the correct. RSS feed as well. Yeah. Um, so you can either uh, you know, design it uh, or have it on the site. Did I get the, the pitch largely correct? You can go and grab RSS feeds, display them on the site. Are there other use cases that you've seen that are very attractive for this plugin? That's pretty much the gist of the majority of uh, use cases for it. So whether it's news, community news, whether it's job listings, whether it's even YouTube videos, podcasts, whatever it is, uh, as long as it has an RSS feed, it can be embedded on your site. There's different ways of doing it. So you can have a simple list. You can have something like great sort of similar to this in a way where you have a snippet and then featured image and then a link back to the original source. Or you can bring in the entire post directly to your site. That would depend on the source itself as well, whether they allow the sharing of their content in that way. But we see a lot of people even use it for their own uh, sister sites. So if it's you personally and you have your personal blog and you have a company website and you want to bring in company news into your personal blog, we've seen larger corporations and larger universities who have different departments and they would bring in, let's say, all the department news into their main website, either for the public, or you were mentioning private podcasts earlier, it's even done on private communities or intranet style sites where a company has a website dedicated solely to their employees. Uh, and we've seen local communities who have uh, private membership sites and they would have podcast feeds behind the paid membership as well. And recently, um, as in what, probably the last few months or so, you've introduced the, the, the audio player um, integration yeah. or made for podcasting, essentially, uh, to embed podcasts, uh, again, on any WordPress site that you have this running. How did that come about? Did you start to get a, have a lot of requests from, from customers saying, boy, I'd love to do this with podcasting and hit play? Or did you just look at the landscape of the industry and say, well, this is obviously the next piece of content I think we should support? It's a combination of both. So we always think at new ways of, of improving the plugin, uh, but we were getting a lot of feedback about podcasts. And in the past, we had built some minor integrations for, for some customers, depending on the podcast plugin they were using and so on. But it was honestly overcomplicated for, for a simple use case. So what we did was yeah, we embedded an audio player. So now I have an option that whatever podcast feed you bring into your site, the audio player is directly there. So whether you're using our templates, which just embeds a grid or a list or something like that on the page, it will have an audio player for each one. Or if you're importing them as posts, it will add the audio player to the post content area and your site visitors can listen to the podcast directly on your site without having to go to any app, without having to go any other website. It's all right there. Gotcha. So uh, up on the screen in a second is the pricing page. Everything that we show uh, today for the audio side of things, uh, mm -hmm. does the user need the basic level or the pro level to achieve what we're going to show off today? So it depends what you want. So if it's just using our templates and you will embed it on any page, on any post, uh, anywhere on your site, you can use basic. If you want to import the podcast as WordPress posts or as any custom post type, because you can have a custom post type and then you use something like advanced custom fields to, to create a different template. That's where you would need pro and it can bring in, it can import the podcast into any post. You can control the images, you can control categories, you can control the author, uh, basically just anything to do with, with custom posts. Uh, but also important to know that there is uh, a free version, obviously, of WP RSS Aggregator. Maybe not, obviously. Maybe you didn't realize that until I just showed it. Um, WordPress.org slash plugin slash WP hyphen RSS hyphen aggregator. Just search for WP RSS Aggregator on Google or on WordPress.org. You'll find the free version. So if you want to at least 
try out the product first. It's not going to do the podcast stuff that we're going to show today, but it, you can pull down an RSS feed and show it, uh, show it on your WordPress website. It might be a great way to just get your feet wet with the product. And if you like some of the stuff that we see today, go and buy it. It's not that expensive <laughs> uh, to do the things that we're about to do. Okay. I am going to pull up um, my example site. I already have it installed. I already have it activated. We're using the template add-on. Uh, the template add-on, what's the other add-on that I'm using? Uh, feed to post. That's uh, the other feed option. To post, yeah. Right. Feed to post. So that'll save the content uh, to WordPress posts. I've already set up a template called the audience podcast because what we're going to do is display um, our Casos audience podcast RSS feed on this WordPress website. Fingers crossed Matt doesn't mess it up. <laughs> set up the template first. Basically, we're, we're saying when we bring in this RSS feed to the WordPress site, we want it to look a certain way. Um, if you're somebody who watches all the videos I put out, thank you. Uh, but the last few videos have been just about that. It's about customizing archive pages, landing pages for your podcast, uh, specifically the podcast that's on your WordPress website now. But if you want to pull down a WordPress pod or a podcast from another website, this is how you're going to do it today. So these are the options we have. We have image, title, excerpt, audio player, obviously very important for, um, for a podcast. Uh, information, is that the, the, the content in the editor or the body of the text? That's what you just closed over there. So if you click on that, yeah, it's a date, the okay, source, yeah, yeah, and the yeah. author. And each option yeah. has options beneath it as well. So you can click on each one uh, and change a number of things for those. And you can even reorder them from the three lines on the far left. So you can drag the audio player to the top, drag the audio player to the bottom, just play around with those however you want. Gotcha. And uh, list, grid, or excerpt, and thumbnails. These are the three template types. Um, are there options for more template types, or in the future there'll be more template types? There will be more later this year, yeah. We're working on a few. Some of them will be focused as well more on specific use cases, like podcasts, where you will have different styling options for the audio player and so on. So uh, once you create the template, that's ready to go. And what I like about the template approach, and I think I talked about this in uh, one of these archive pages, videos that I've, I discussed, having the sort of central template point is, is beneficial because you can obviously repeat these templates, right? So if you're going to be importing multiple podcasts from multiple sources, they can all look the same, number one. But number two is you can just change this template if you need to make it. So where your heroes last, last left off is we finished up setting up the template, uh, which is sort of step one in using the RSS uh, aggregator plugin. We set up the template. We tell it, here's what we want our feeds to look like when we import uh, the actual feed. Okay, Mark. Walk me through. Next step, where do we go to import the feed source? All right. So you can go to the feed sources page on the RSS aggregator, click on add new, and that's where you're going to... Uh, now, in this case, you have feed to post. So feed to post adds a number of different options and meter boxes towards the bottom if you're only using templates. Uh, so in this case, actually, I would recommend deactivating the feed to post add-on. Okay. It'll be cleaner even for, for the image settings and so on, so we can see everything from there. All right. They can still be used together as well. If anyone wants to use both feed to post and templates, um, they can both be used and they can work perfectly together. But in this case, it'd be a lot cleaner to start with templates. Got it. All right. So we'll go back to that RSS aggregator feed sources, add new, yeah. and we'll need the URL. In this case, much I know, we're going to go to castles.com slash audience, grab the RSS feed uh, for the audience podcast. Boom, 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 right here. And paste in the URL there. Should I click on validate feed? There's no need, so we know it's a valid feed. It's a valid okay. RSS feed. Um, you can limit the number of posts that come in. Unique titles only is more for the news kind of stuff. Um, basically, if you have duplicates of the same title, you make sure you always keep the original version only. Uh, you can link to the enclosure URL from, from the feed. Uh, the other options aren't really that important. You can leave them as they are. Usually no one touches those. And mm -hmm. then featured image, uh, probably auto detect is your best option here. It typically yeah. works for the majority of feeds. You can put the default featured image. So when there isn't an image for a particular episode oh. or anything else, you can have a sort of a fallback. 
That's cool. um, image size, you can set the minimum image size. So if it doesn't, so if it has multiple images, it would ignore ones that are too small or too big. Then you see what you really want. So let me uh, zoom in on that just so folks, if they're watching on their mobile yep. device, plus this thing is uh, squished to the, to the right. URL, very easy. You grab the RSS feed from your podcast that you're looking to link up. Uh, I put limit five here just for the sake of testing. Should I do the link to enclosure? And, and just so I'm getting that right, when somebody checks that off, link to enclosure, it'll bring them back to the source URL. Is that what it does? No, so um, when you click to, so you can have the title clickable, you can have sort of a read more link on the template and these kinds of things. Uh, there are some feeds where the enclosure URL has a particular link which you would rather link back to for whatever reason. Gotcha. Um, there's different use cases, usually for podcasts, it's not really something you need. So you can leave it unticked. And then on the right, under feed processing, there's a few things which you can alter. Um, update intervals, basically the most important here. So how often you want it to check for new podcasts in this case. In this case. Uh, and limit items by age. So if you, for example, don't, rather than setting a limit of five items, you can tell it only keep the podcast episodes in the past three months. And that will remove the older ones as new ones come in. Gotcha. Uh, so I can leave all of this stuff by, for, to, yeah. as it is. Okay, cool. Very good. So I'm yeah. going to go ahead and hit publish. Hit. It will import automatically. And then you just go to your page, add the block, and uh, choose both source and template, and you're done. I gave it a name first because I almost forgot that. Um, yeah. So you can either use the block or you can use short codes, right? Because the short code appears uh, up Correct, top. So yeah. you can grab that and use that. Or what we'll do, because everyone loves Gutenberg, right? Everyone loves <laughs> Gutenberg, right? <laughs> we'll go to the RSS page and we'll look for the block. Uh, is it's it the, searchable? Yeah, you put RSS. Yeah, there you go. There. Yeah, searchable. So you put an RSS will come up as well. So now from the side, feed sources, you can choose, uh, enter the name that you put in. Audience, I think. Um, so that's feed sources too. All right. So, yeah. So, didn't import them yet. Okay. So, if you go back to the feed sources list. Okay. Might not have imported them yet. Leave. Feed sources. Yeah. So, it's importing them in the background. Oh, okay. Uh, you should be pretty quick. Yeah. There you go. Live items. Now we'll go back to pages. That was pretty cool. Um, RSS page, edit. What was that bad boy? Hmm. So this is the default list. Now from the side, under display options, you can select the template you created. And it will switch to that layout. I only did five, so I'm not going to do that. Cool. So now I'll hit update. You can change some settings from here as well. So we probably set the fade limit to four. I believe it should uh, bring it down to four anyway. Uh, you mean if I show four? Yeah. Just do it right here at the feed limit? Exactly. You might need to go down on the tribute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Update. Preview. And I forget which theme I'm using because this is just a test site. So it's probably Astra. Cool. Now I could do something like uh, if I edit the page, sidebar, no sidebar. Um, I don't know. I'll just do full width contained. Update. Boom. Preview, it's gonna look exactly the same, but there it is, beautiful. And then if yeah, I you can play it, around with this, you can change the number of columns, you can change the number of posts, you can put pagination in there as well. So you have a lot of, a lot of episodes you can show first 12 and then have pagination for the rest. It's all customizable. Nice. Well, that was pretty painless. Yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I see a read more links back to the audience podcast source audience podcast. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this, I mean, this is really cool. What about, um, I guess this is where it gets technical, right? This is where, if you go into the template, this is where we'd go into customizing. That's not what I wanted templates. 
edit. Like if I wanted to make that, this image bigger, um, is that going to be largely dependent on the source or? Um, so if you want to show that image in full size, you can go to the image options there and you have a number of options. You can use it as the background to the entire uh, grid section of it. You can have it linked to the original source. You can set the height and then it will take up the space. You can fit image to size. So in that case, for example, you set it to a full width page. So it can automatically adjust the image to the size of the grid, depending on the section of the page that it's in. And then replace with embed is uh, something usually used for YouTube, for example. So if you have your podcast on YouTube, you can also put in a YouTube feed. So you put in your YouTube channel URL, for example, as a source. Yeah. And the embed in this case would be the YouTube video itself. So the grid uh, template can actually display the YouTube video playable directly on your site. So people don't need to go to YouTube to watch your podcast or listen to your podcast. It will be directly on your site as a video. Nice. I'm just going to change some things around excerpts to a hundred and then I'm going to say, listen to the show instead of mm -hmm. uh, read more. I'm going to hit save. We also checked off. I'm going to zoom in. I keep forgetting to do that. Fill image to size um, excerpt to a hundred. And I changed the read more text to listen to the show. Hit update one more time. Do I still have the page up? I do. That's going to be a drafted version. So let me go back all pages and RSS page. Beautiful. Oh, so the 150 height, I'll have to adjust that. Yeah, because you, right? you have a manual height, so you can adjust that. These templates are actually going to be uh, going through a bit of a revamp very soon as well. So there's be a, it'll be a lot simpler and there'll be a lot more customization options for specifically podcasts and even for videos and for news feeds. It'll be a lot easier to customize these templates even more. Sweet. Still, though, giving you a lot of power. It's hard. It's hard to uh, take into account a billion WordPress themes. <laughs> so uh, never, never an easy task. Yeah, we tried to leave it a bit customizable in a way because yeah, it's the different types of themes, the different types of feeds. It's the nature of RSS to be very different on every site you can imagine. Um, so that's typically, these are typically the problems which come up with this plugin. It's just a bit of customization here and there uh, to refine the look of things and then it's automated. You barely have to touch this thing and it will just run in the background for you. Nice. Very good, man. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Is there anything else we should take a look at? So if I just change this to a list. So this is just a list of titles, but the excerpts and thumbnails will be sort of a news feed where you can gotcha. have the image on the, on the left, title and excerpt and audio player beneath it, for example. So will be gotcha. there. Cool. Yeah, so I mean, if you were doing a, a, a site that had just a ton of content, I mean, maybe the, the images is just too much visually and, and maybe for load time and all that fun stuff, but a quick list of podcasts, um, you know, depending on how many you're curating is, is probably just as effective. Yeah, and this can be used for uh, multiple podcasts as well. So we've had people who create essentially sort of a grid on their page with two or three columns each one having a different podcast. In that case, the image is a bit too much. So you would have just the list style uh, or you put it on a sidebar where you don't want all that space taken up by a massive image. So you just put the list and you have the podcast playable directly from your sidebar. Fantastic stuff. Mark, this was pretty cool. Is there anything else um, we can look forward to? Uh, the audio player or something like that? I think you'd mentioned you might be doing some revamp on the audio player as well. Or... Yeah, we're doing a bit of an overall revamp. Um, the audio players are one of the things we, we touch on. So these templates are going to be improved substantially in the coming months. And we have a number of ideas in, in the works. Uh, if anyone has feedback on the ways that they want their podcast to be displayed, they can reach out to us on our support page on our website. Uh, and we'd be happy to discuss a number of ideas. We already have a number of existing customers who we reached out to for feedback when we launched this audio player who gave us a number of ideas. So we're working on a few different things, a few different layouts for different styles uh, for displaying your podcasts in different places on your site, different styles of sites, be it a full landing page, be it a small section of your site, and to be a lot simpler to, to embed them. 
WP RSS aggregator. Again, search for it on wordpress.org. Search for it in Google. You'll find it. You can find and play with the free version just to test it out, just to see what you can do with the plugin. Um, and then again, if you want to use those templates that we looked at today, you'll have to grab uh, the pro version, which for 59 bucks is not a bad deal, right? If you're going to be importing all of these podcasts uh, or creating a community site, it's fantastic. And as you saw, even a person like myself who loses the internet halfway through an interview <laughs> uh, can manage to rebound and get uh, a podcast import. And again, you can do that on any page. Um, I recently talked to somebody here at Castos. Uh, they were building a comedy, uh, comedy network, comedy podcast mm -hmm. network, right? And they were going to host some um, of those podcast episodes directly out of their WordPress website here with Castos, but they're bringing on talent that has podcasts, from other places, right? That are not hosted at Castos. So this is an ideal fit for somebody like that. They can bring those in from their new talent that's not hosted from them yet, but maybe in the future they switch. But it's just a great way to uh, easily move this stuff around. So Mark, I want to thank you for sticking through a billion technical difficulties today. Uh, where else can folks find you to say thanks? Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, people can find me on Twitter at Mark Zara, uh, Z-A-H-R-A. You got that a bit wrong in the YouTube title. But that's not the problem. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why <laughs> no my brain, as I quickly went to get this thing up and running today, uh, I was like, wait a minute. I, when I said it at the start of the show, I was like, I got to go ahead and change this app. So I do apologize for that. Go ahead. No continue. problem. No problem. Um, yeah. So Twitter, uh, WPRSSIGATOR.com. You can reach out to us in support and we reply to you within a few hours. Uh, WP Mayor, same thing. Twitter at WP Mayor. Twitter at WPRSSIGATOR. And spotlightwp.com for the Spotlight Instagram Feeds plugin. Everybody else, castos.com. Castos.com slash audience. If you want to listen to the audience podcast, youtube.com slash castos. Don't forget to subscribe uh, and like the video. If you watched this live today uh, and you sat through Mark standing around, you're the, you're the best. Like you're the, <laughs> you know, you're the, you're the best, best kind of YouTube viewer uh, that we want here. Um, this video will be downloaded and that whole dark screen of nothingness, whatever the stream disconnected, uh, will be chopped out and uh, re-uploaded as another video. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you in the next video.